Hello, I am Beatrice. Uh, this <laughs> is Cachupina, or my teddy cat. Hello and welcome back to a new Sambanitz podcast episode. I'm Beatriz, I'm the designer behind Sambanitz. Uh, I come to you from Santiago de Chile. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, today is January 13th, I think, of 2021. So it's my first podcast of this year. So Happy New Year. I hope this uh, year treats us all with more kindness and more joy and hope than last year. So yeah. Um, these are my wishes for <laughs> this new year. Um, this is a podcast about knitting and sometimes I think other things more that occur to me, but pretty most most about knitting. Um, yeah. Uh, you can find me as somebody uh, everywhere on the internet, on Ravelry, on Instagram, on Gmail. If you want, you can turn in subtitles. Uh, I put uh, subtitles in all uh, in Portuguese and Spanish, and also in English because I'm Brazilian. I live in Chile, and I know that sometimes it might be hard to understand what I'm uh, <laughs> talking about. So, if you want, you can um, turn in subtitles. Uh, what else? Yeah, um, I have. I know I have disappeared uh, in the end of last year. Uh, I had some health issues, not COVID related, but they uh, it needed my attention right away, and it got me quite stressed out. It was hard for me to concentrate. It was hard for me to I don't know to function. Um, and I tried to record a few times, but it felt kind of odd that I was. I don't know, pretending to be fine when I was actually feeling, not feeling um, uh, physically ill, but feeling like very anxious uh, with everything that was going on. So yeah, I had to take a, a break and then my work completely piled up and it was Christmas time and end of the year crazy mess that always happens. Um, then yeah, <laughs> so I'm back now. I hope that's okay. Um, what else? Everything's fine now. Um, and yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I have been doing a lot of knitting. I have lots of things to show you guys. I think I'm gonna have to split. I uh, talk about some things on this episode and some other things on the next one, but. That's a good thing, right? Uh, we have material for uh, next podcast. So yeah. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, yes. So the first thing I want to show you today is the Vinicocas. I don't think I don't know if I talked about it on the previous episode. I'm not sure. But anyways, these are. A collaboration with Miss Bob's Yarns and it's a sweater. I uh, worked in their Yausa, I don't know how to pronounce it, Yausa base, Yosa base. Um, it's DK weight and uh, it's this sweater and this slouchy hat that I'm not gonna put it on otherwise because I mess up my hair and my hair has been completely like to say untenable like it's it's part of working out now so i don't want to mess it up uh, because it's been hard i haven't cut my hair in like almost a year so yeah but back to this um so yeah this is the Vinicunca. it's um a dk weight sweater it worked bottom up, up um i think i used uh, 375 millimeters um Needles, needles. Uh, it has like this main color, and this it's work with six contrast colors on this slip, chi- slip stitch mosaic stitch pattern. Um, Vinicunca 
It's a mountain in the Peruvian and Andes, 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 and because of the um, how, how say the, the soil composition, it gets like sort of like um, a rainbow effect. So you look at the mountain and think like it's very colorful. It has like very noticeable uh, colorful stripes. It's very beautiful. I have never been personally, but I would love to go and. I, I, I always try to name my parents something about the region or something cultural about um, Brazil, Peru, Chile that are my, the country where I'm from and the country I live in. So, I don't know, to bring sort of like, I don't know, awareness or to... I don't know, because I, I love these countries and um, it's sort of like um, an affectionate uh, response of mine, I think. But anyway, it's called uh, Vinicunca, and I think Vinicunca is a Quechua word. Quechua is the, the language spoken on the Andes, um, and I think it means like seven colors or something, uh, if I'm not wrong. Um, and it's also referred to as the Rainbow Mount, and, and it's quite hard to get there. Um, yeah, I think you have to. Hike for I don't know like three four miles uh, because it's only accessible by, by hike I think uh, and yeah I would love to go there I my father is from Peru and I have family there uh, but it has been a long long time since I, I have been and I miss it um, and it would be very good I think it would be very nice to go there now that I have been because I didn't learn Spanish with my father's family. I, I was very used to listening to it and understanding, but um, I wasn't encouraged to speak, so I could understand, but I would uh, rep reply in Portuguese, and Portuguese and Spanish are very similar, so I would get back with my cousins, my my aunts, and my uncles, and everyone. But, yeah, it would be very nice to go there. I haven't been there in like almost 20 years, I think, to, to Lima, there from Lima, but it would be very good because now I could actually have like a more deeper conversation <laughs> with them. And I hope we can do that sometime soon after this pandemic allows us to get back to uh, traveling. <laughs> I miss traveling. I think everyone is traveling. Right? Uh, but yeah. Um, so yeah, it's worth doing six contrast colors. Um, the, the gray one is oyster color, the, the colorway, and this Magu, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to put the names down on because I'm not gonna remember all of them. This one is thick, and that's the one I remember. This one is sunny, I think, and yeah, I'm gonna have to put it down because <laughs> I don't remember. It's, um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna remember the names, but um, you can use contrast colors like from a, a mini set this were from a mini from Miss Bubs or you can use um, leftover yarn you can use very uh, one just like one skein of variegated yarn you can work everything in only one color if you want using the texture of the slip stitches I mean I think it would work well uh, it would look quite nice um, I have one other tester, I think she's using like a self striping yarn held double and I think um, every it's like a very interesting pattern to play with like, this different sort of oh, with leftover yarn, with self striping yarn, with variegated yarn and everything. And uh, I, I really love how it turned out. I cannot wait until it gets colder here in Santiago so I can wear it. Um, it's worked uh, it's bottom up and then you split for the arms and you work the, um, the front and the back flat. The body's worked in the round and then you. Uh, bind off together 
the shoulders. There is no uh, shoulder shaping. Uh, it's, it's very, it's very simple construction pattern. And then you pick up your your block because if you don't, it's very difficult to pick up the stitches. And then you work the the, the sleeves, picking up the stitches and knitting them and decreasing. And that's it. And also, yeah, we work here the the color, but yeah. I'm very pleased how it turned out. Um, unfortunately, I, I have got the, um, not as many testers as I wanted. So if anyone is interested, we have um, openings for testing from I think size four and up. And yeah, the the deadline is in the end of February. But this is. I, I think people don't believe me when I say this. <laughs> this deep up in sorry, but um, in no time because this is these are all slip stitches. So every how do you say every uh, pearl bump you see is a, a four round um, repeat, and the the bow the second the. Two are worked in uh, knitting, in stock net, with the main color, and then two are worked with the contrast color. Because it's most like knitting, you slip half of the, of the stitches. So it's actually four rounds, but actually if you go and do math and stuff, you actually are working three rounds. So it's like 75% of knitting instead of a hundred percent. I don't know if you can understand, but it really needs up very fast. Um, it's the, the deadline is in the end of February, but it's flexible and we could uh, work something out and uh, see what would be possible. So if anyone is interested, we have uh, skirts open for sizes four and up still. And this is uh, the how to say the the son of the, <laughs> of the sweater is the Vini Kunka hat. Um, it's also the same the same principle um, six colors the same one. Um, I I had uh, some yarn yeah, left over from this one uh, because Miss Bell's minis are very generous, so they are almost like. 100 scan minis. I think they're like 90 or 80 grams the, on the, their DK mini set. So it was quite a lot of yardage that you get. Uh, so I thought maybe I should do a hat and people could swatch with the hat instead of swatching. You just make the hat and then you, you have the your swatch, your swatch to work your sweater. So yeah, um, and this is a very slouchy hat. As I said, I cannot put it on because um, hair issues. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's very slouchy and also worked in the round from brim to the crown. The crown decreases very fast giving this like sort of, how to say, uh, like tugging, pulling in and making like this uh, this shape. It's not a head that stays uh, flat when you take it off. Uh, but uh, this was actually my intention because of like th th this large shape, I think like when it just goes down, like it looks sort of like, no, no, like, empty bag so it, this way it has more structure like sort of like a star shape but yeah uh, this is full the testing but the pattern will come out in the end of January so if you're interested and also some testers are doing a great job using like less colors or like self-striping colors and variegated colors and yeah this design has been like brewing in the back of my mind for a long long time and it's it's great to see it after 
so long to finally come to life. <laughs> and I, I was very disappointed when I couldn't get as many testers for the sweater. But I, I understand, I, I think it's, it's been so rough for everyone the past year and uh, I, I feel like that too sometimes that I, I want to just need stock net in the round for miles because if you have to think a little bit more it's often but trust me when I say this this one is very very easy going and I, I know it looks quite intimidating but it's not it's actually very 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 like straightforward and simple and yeah so I hope you guys like it and yeah if you're interested send me a message here at robbery gmail instagram um, and we can work something out for testing okay I don't know if you can see her, but Cachupina is sleeping here. Sorry, you don't want to wake you up. Yeah. And she's going to the nest. She has some health problems in the end. Of, not in the end, one was it? In the end of July, the beginning of August. We treated her, but now she has been doing like that how to say uh, like that cough that gets like <laughs> like if she's I don't know gagging or something I don't know how how do you say it in English and I, I took her to the vet for her vaccines in like two weeks ago and the vet checked her and said she was gonna put out a hairball but she didn't and she's still doing a lot of that so I'm gonna take her to the vet again today because this was one of the signs when she got, like, she got, I was the name of it, triaditis, I think, uh, in, in August. Uh, we have been, we changed her food, we changed her diet, and she also had some problems with the, her kidneys that they were, um, I think, smaller than they should be. And so she. We changed her everything, like put her a fountain for her and stuff, and she got very much better. Um, but now that she's gagging again, I don't know. I'm afraid it might, I don't know, got back. But on her last ultrasound, that was just in the last week of November, it was everything was great. So I don't know why she started this gagging like one or two weeks after that. So. Better be safe, right? Then I don't know. Let something happen. <laughs> so, yeah. We are going to go to the vet. Um, yeah. So this one is the other pattern I have on testing right now. Uh, it's the truss hat. This is um, also a, a, a very Fun pattern. Um, it's worked in garter stitch. I don't know if you can see. And it has this chevron. There's cat hair everywhere. I'm sorry. And on garter stitch with this chevron uh, lace. This is lace, not uh, cable. And it's very fun. I'm gonna put a top in here. Uh, also a bit slouchy. And this is sport weight yarn. Um, I use a Chilean 100% uh, wool, uh, Lana Belle Lana Pura. I don't know if you can get it outside of Chile, uh, maybe in some other South American countries. But yeah, um, I love this this pattern stitch. I use this also on. Uh, What's the name of it? And the truss shawl, that's also a pattern that, um, of mine. It was published July of 2019, I think. Um, and yeah, this is also a bit slouchy. And ah, this and the Vinikunka, they come in three sizes. Three sizes. They come in 
six sizes, uh, baby, toddler, child, adult, S, M, and L. So yeah, for the whole family. And this is uh, a very quick knit as well. Hats are always a quick knit, right? Um, I had a lot of fun as well designing this and I cannot wait until it gets cold and I can go, we can go outside. So I can use my sweaters and my hats and everything because I have been needing so much and it's quite um, sad that there's nowhere to use them now, right? Not, I mean, not nowhere to use them now, but now it's summer, but yeah. So this, I think, is all that I have of my designs for today. Uh, so now I'm going to show you some other things that I have been working on uh, that are not my designs. I, I don't remember, but I said in the end, well, on, I think it was my last episode, that I was going to start, how do you say, start needing some other designers patterns on, on weekends and stuff to learn new techniques and to um, I don't know, find inspiration and relax because when you work with your hobby, when you transform your hobby into your work, you don't, I, I love it, but you don't relax as much because I am then, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm needing up until, I don't know, before I go to bed, like, 12 or 1 a.m. and if I'm working on something of mine, I have to be taking notes, I have to be like paying attention and figuring things out and it's not as, I would say, relaxing as it, if you're working on someone, on someone else's pattern. So yeah, I thought I should start doing that because I love knitting and I love also uh, many other designer works so there are so many great ones out there that uh, I almost feel like I was missing out on some of the fun too so yeah um, so before uh, I show you what I have in progress of other designers, I wanted to show, share with you this one. Um, I think I haven't talked about it yet on this English podcast. I have talked about it on, I think, a Spanish book, a Spanish episode oh, from time ago. Um, this one is the this chain uh, top sweater. Um, I forgot the name of the designer, I'm gonna put it down on the links. And it's one of my favorites knits ever. Um, I made this one for myself and I also made one for my mom. She asked me um, and I gave her to her for her birthday, I think it was last year. Um, last, last, last year, like 2019. Um, and this one is I worked this one and also my mom's. I worked in a Brazilian yarn called Pura Fibra. That's I, I think it's a hundred percent no, fifty percent flax um, fiber. Fifty no. Oh my God! It's the, the name of the the name of the yarn of the base is flax, but it's fifty percent linen and fifty percent rayon, I think, or something like 60 40 or something but it's linen and rayon so it's quite it's not as hard as the linen and not as like um, smooth and uh, as the rayon sometimes the rayon is too like it's too heavy too drapey i think and this one is more structured so yeah um I, I didn't get gauge because I was working with, I think the pattern called for iron weight yarn and this one was sort of like more on the heavy decay. So 
I think I, I, I worked um, one size bigger than mine or something, but I am very pleased with the results. Um, I, I have this written on my project page on Ravelry, but um, the pattern says for you to knit it um, flat, front, back, separate and flat and then sew up. That was not gonna happen for me. <laughs> I, I don't like uh, sewing things. Um, so I, I, I rearranged the pattern to work it uh, in the round. So I, I know that when you do this, you, you lose structure. But since it was uh, a, a linen mix um, yarn that has already of structure, a lot, lot of structure, I thought I could get away with it, and I think I did. And I, I love how it turned out. This one is, I think, one of my my finished options that get I have said, the most use ever. I think even more than some of my, my samples, I would say. Uh, no, uh, my sweaters I, I wear a lot, I think, but yeah, I, I would say of like summer tops and stuff, but one, uh, um, I only have one summer top design, I think, so far. This one gets a lot of use and I love it. So I, as I was saying, um, I used a provisional cast on here and uh, I worked until where the what the arm depth that the pattern set, I think, and then I unraveled the, the cast on and worked the it's flat here. I, I don't remember. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it was a provisional cast on. I worked the back until the the. The depth that was stated in the pattern, pattern for the armhole, the armhole depth. I unraveled the provisional cast on and I worked the front like the pattern said for the for the lace here because when you work gutter that you see that there are some gutter here. You have to, if it's a wrong side row and the pants work flat, you have to convert it to work in, um, in the round. So this part was worked flat. And then when I got up to here, I joined and I worked uh, in the round and I had to, how to say, convert the lace pattern, the lace stitch pattern to work it in the round. But, um, it was quite easy, it was not nothing like all. And I think I have I have some rough instructions in my pattern, my Ravelry pattern in my Ravelry project page um, for doing this. And yeah. Uh, I'm very pleased with the result. The one I made for my mom. Uh, I also did this, I also worked it in the round, but I didn't use a provisional cast on. I used, I picked up stitches. So this gives um, here a more structured line than the, um, than the how to say, than uh, the provisional cast on, because the provisional cast on will be like, um, not like the, the pattern I think it calls it calls for sewing but yeah so and when you pick up the stitches you get the line here that gives you structure and I also shaped her back and her shoulders uh, with no I don't remember now if I shaped the back or the shoulders with some German short folds. I think it was both shoulders yeah uh, yeah, she was very happy with it. The only thing um, I didn't like was that I had bought all the, um, the skeins from the same dye lot and one skein, it is not a hand dyed um, 
yarn or anything. It's a commercial yarn. And one of them was completely different from the others and of course I didn't notice. I wasn't alternating skeins. So in the end here, because hers, I, I made it like a tunic length. So it goes all the way to almost her hips, I think. It's not cropped. Um, so yeah, the, uh, it has like a line here. She was happy with it. She, she noticed it and said, no, it's okay. I think it looks like if it's part of the design, but um, um, yeah, it would. I couldn't unravel it, do it again, because she was living, she was here in Chile with me for her birthday and her Christmas and New Year's and stuff. And she was leaving the next day, like, I don't know, five, seven hours later after what I had given it to her. So, yeah. But she's happy she wears it and that's what counts, right? But yeah, it's, uh, I recommend this pattern a lot. And if you don't want to, like, if you don't want to sew the, part, the parts together, you can do just like I did and work it in the round. It's not that hard to convert. Um, pattern that seemed to a seamless pattern if you want and if you have questions about this just talk to me and I can give you more directions okay <laughs> yes so um, this was one of the first patterns I think I guessed it on when I decided to start with this uh, relaxing knit, uh, we can knit, and it's the Soldotna from Caitlin Hunter, and as I said, remember that I said the Vini uh, well, I, I had yarn left over, so yeah, these are also yarn left over from the Vini Kunkas. so I got on a mini set of six, I got uh, yarns for a sweater, a hat, and another sweater. Um, this one, they are all in Yauza base, so uh, they are all from leftover uh, projects that I have. So I'm working size, I think size 2, well, yeah, size S. Yeah, it's not the smallest size. Um, I'm quite small, I'm very short and small. But yeah, so I, th I think it was size 2, I think. Uh, and yeah, but I think this, this is sort of a pattern that if you want, you can even use more color, I think. Uh, I don't think I will have enough of the purple to work the final rib here. So, some stitches fell off. So I think I'm gonna use another um, another color. Um, but yeah, this one I think was called fig. The the orange one is if I'm not wrong, wrong coreopsis I think. Um, coreopsis was the red. No, yeah, um, coreopsis. The the green one. The, the, this dark green one is fiddlehead that I that I had left over from my mariposa sweater, and this one is migration that I had um, from my Itachiya cocoon sample left, uh, and this light blue one, not light blue one, light green one is the one from the um, I think it's lettuce the colorway from the Vinicunca. So yeah, um, I, I'm using five colors instead of four that the pattern calls for, but I think it worked fine because here is a green and then here I had to switch for another green, so it's another section very different from this one. And I think I'm gonna have to change for another purple here for the bottom ribbon. And I'm also working um, it a little bit longer. I think the pattern says uh, that they work this um, color work repeats here like five times I'm working six already and I've not tried to squeeze in a seven because I have this leftover of the migration colorway and um, 
I really wanted to use it all up because having such a, a, a little ball in the, in the stash of your leftover yarn it gets me anxious because it's great yarn and I, 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 I don't know, I, I hate it that it's just sitting there like collecting dust so um, this one I think is um, a great uh, pattern to use up leftover yarn. You can use like the pattern set called for, like four colors, or you can use more colors or less colors, I think. Um, but yeah, I think it's great to use leftover yarn. So I'm very happy. I, can, I cannot wait until I block it. I hope this, I have a very significant gauge change here between the, when I start the color work section. Um, but I hope this blocks out. <laughs> and yeah, um, it was a very fun pattern and I feel like I, I very much developed my color work, my strand of color work. I'm sorry for the, the noise today. Uh, I think that it really helped me develop my, like my confidence in stranded color work. I'm very happy with it. <laughs> Hi. So, uh, the other thing I had to show you guys is, I think you remember this, this are um, uh, some socks I'm making for Chris. And I know I said it didn't bother me that they were mismatched but I cannot bring myself to finish them, so it's bothering me <laughs> that they are mismatched. And oh, I really don't know what to do. Uh, I mean, I, I know what to do, but I really don't want to do what I have to do to be happy with this. <laughs> so, what I thought was um, I should frog one of them. rework it uh, using also the magic loop method and the same needles to get the same gauge. Um, I think if I do that it's going to be okay, it won't have like any issues um, for, uh, because one the first was worked with two at a time and then the other one's just like one solo. If I work both with magic loop and stuff and the same needles. And um, I love these needles. These are my Eddie's lace, um, and uh, they're uh, 2.5. I think that's one in. No. Yeah, I think that's a one in US. One US maybe? Zero US? No, I think it's one US. Anyways, um, I love it because I bought this especially for socks and they are one meter long. Um, so they're uh, a little bit longer than like the standard circulars. Uh, at least here in Chile, the standard circulars, circulars are uh, the 80 centimeters, um, that's 32 inch uh, cord length. And this one, um, are one meter, like a hundred centimeter, forty inch length, and it's you, you can really tell the difference when you're working magic loop. That it, at least for me, it gets much more comfortable working with these than with eighty centimeters. But it's completely uh, okay to work with eighty centimeters as well. I, I used to work them with my. I had a pair of Aeros. That's um, I don't know if it's a Chilean brand or something, but um, it was also super okay. But this I find it more comfortable. And plus the Ali has, are quite smooth, so the, the cord and the, and the needle. So like the, the yarn really like slides easily. <laughs> um, also with the Aero. But anyways, uh, I'm very unhappy with them. And I cannot bring myself to finish, so I think I'm gonna frog until like the toe. I don't know which one, um, and rework only one. 
I'm gonna have to count my rows though. Yeah, but I can do that, that's not bad. And if they match, then it's going to be much, much easier. Um, but yeah, that's... That was completely my fault for being lazy and didn't want to be bothered with uh, arranging the, them to, to match when I was sketching it on. So I also bought two more <laughs> from the same brand, Reves Derecho, uh, the same base, um, also self striping. I don't know if this. Because these are self-striping, but the stripes are not like super regular, like that classical self-striping repeat. I think these are gonna be the same as these, but let's see how it meets up. Like sort of like Halloween vibe. <laughs> I really like this. Um, and for me, for Chris, I don't know. I, I think it's gonna be. I think to be honest, I, I can get a pair for us both because here, like it's. I just have like one inch maybe more of leg for Chris and then I have the the cuffs and I have this contrast color that I can work with and I have look how much I have two skeins and they are like half they are each 50 gram skeins and I must have used it used like half of it and I still have, yeah, like one more inch, I think, in length and the, the heel, the afterthought heel. Uh, but still, uh, I think you can really, really get away with... I wouldn't say like get away, but <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, I think you can uh, maybe just use... I know if one would be enough for Chris, but for me it would one skein would definitely be enough for a pair of socks for me. But yeah, so I think I'm gonna have to throw it this, rework one, and then because I promised myself I wouldn't cast on another pair until I finish this one. Um, I could, but you have to <laughs> draw the line somewhere, right? And uh, I haven't been like super. I used to love knitting socks, and it was actually one of my favorite things to do. But to knit, but I don't know. I, I think I kind of got not bored, but I still do. I still love it I, I, um, and stuff. But um, I, I don't know. It's I, I'm into other stuff right now, not as much as knitting socks. So. Um, I'm kind of slow going. This I think I cast it, casted this on for him. I think it was August or something. And it's not like they are ginormous. They are not. They are like a normal man's foot um, socks. Um, yeah, but yeah. So I'm gonna frog one. I don't know which. I don't know which is going to be, but. Yep. And then I'm gonna work the other one. Uh, and then maybe I will cast this on <laughs> sometime soon, hope. And now the last project I wanted to show you is uh, this cowl that I have been working on. Um, it's called is a pearl so free pattern you can find it uh, you can find the link in uh, reverie or directly in pearl soho pattern that database uh, it's a free pattern uh, for a brioche called cabo uh, it's hard to say for me to speak so a word that I keep mispronunciate. But anyways, um, yeah, this cow. Uh, the, the pattern also is for a cow and a hat. And I am making a cow for my brother-in-law. Uh, his birthday uh, is next week. My in-laws, uh, Chris, his mom, and his brother 
the three of them have birthdays on the same week. So yeah, uh, I decided this is the first time I'm knitting for, for Andres and I hope he likes it. Uh, he wears a lot of cow, cows and I found this to be very much like his style. So yeah, this is like a simple brioche. Uh, it's very, it's a very great pattern if you want to learn brioche because there are no increases, decreases, nothing. The hat has some. Uh, I haven't done, I have never done the hat, but with the decreases, it get a little bit more complicated. But if you just want to learn brioche, you can also like make a small cow like this, uh, or you can make a long one. I'm making him a long one. And um, I, I like brioche. I, I'm not an expert in brioche at all. In fact, these are the only um, these and uh, one pattern of mine that I think I'm not sure if I, I think I showed you already. Ofta that's currently on testing um, is like pretty much all <laughs> only the brioche that I have ever done. And it's very fun, it's very like squishy and creates, a, I think, a very interesting effect with the little vertical colors. And if you want to learn brioche, this one is a great pattern for it. Um, but yeah, this is amusing. I, ooh, I, I don't have the tags. These are also um, yeah, yarn from Lana Bell. This I was this is like sort of iron uh, weight. This is the um, I think sports. Uh, I think the name of the hmm, Faisa Sport is a hundred percent acrylic, and I, I usually don't um, like kneading with acrylic. I, I usually avoid uh, knitting with um, like man-made fibers for environmental uh, reasons, let's say. Um, but there's a, I think, <laughs> uh, sometimes when acrylic works best, and I chose to work uh, this cow in acrylic yarn because I don't want this wouldn't be willing to, I think, um, take care of the, of a hundred percent wool, like the, the care that a hundred percent wool sometimes require. And I think it would be an easier choice for him. So this is the inside. I really like how it, it goes. And this is the right side so I, I don't want to knit cows or scarves or I, I always try to choose patterns that don't have exactly like a right side and a wrong side because in the end you're gonna use both right so uh, I thought this was very interesting you can put it and then you can turn one something like this and you get like sort of like this effect, it's very cool. So yeah. Um, this is the genus brioche head and cowl pattern from Pearl Soho. I'm using I think the pattern called for I think it was uh, US6. A four millimeter I'm not sure but I, I think I'm using I'm using five because of gauge and squishiness and uh, there I, I think the pattern called for worsted weight and I'm using Aaron I, I, I'm not sure right now but I went up a needle size in the pattern called for uh, it's, it's very it's very enjoyable need I, I have been working I worked on this last weekend I hope Andres liked it when I give it to him. I... Anyways, uh, I hope you have enjoyed uh, spending this time with me and uh, I promise I won't disappear again. I have, as I said, many, 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 many other 
projects to show you guys that I have been working on and that I have finished during this time. So hopefully the next episode won't take too long to go out as well. So yeah, if you liked, please um, subscribe, give me a like, give me a message, send me a message, not give me a, send me a message. And if you're interested and want to know anything more about what I have showed you today, um, write me and I would be happy to chat with you a little bit more. Okay? So yeah, uh, again, I wish you all a wonderful uh, new year, 2020. Let's hope it brings us more joy, more kindness, more, I don't know, <laughs> health, peace. And yeah, lots of good vibes and good, good everything <laughs> because we need it, right? So yeah, bye. Thank you.